Hi, welcome to the Online Jewelry Academy. I'm Professor John R. and I'm your instructor. Today I'm going to teach you how to make a project that looks like a pair of leaves. And this is a great project to test your ability to control sweat soldering and it gives you a chance to practice planishing in order to create a more dimensional shape. For this project you're going to need the following tools. You'll need a pair of diagonal cutters, flat nose or chain nose pliers, round nose or rosary pliers, a jeweler saw, some type of either goldsmithing or riveting hammer with a polished face, silver wire, 20 gauge to be exact because you're going to be making an ear wire from it. You'll also need your solder pick, tweezers, a sharpie pen or marking pen or you could substitute with your scriber a small dapping punch copper sheet metal and a stencil or other marking material a bench block flux a flux brush solder cut into pallions a quenching bowl a pickle pot or pickle source with copper tongs to remove your item, a torch, this one is a butane torch, a hardened charcoal block, a heat resistant pad, and for safety a ventilation system, and what I always like to wear, my safety glasses. Okay, let me clear some of this away and I'll show you the first step. Your first step in making the earring is to apply a pattern to your sheet metal. Now I'm using 22 gauge copper sheet metal and I have a pre-cut stencil. Now you can either apply the pattern using a stencil or in a separate video I show you how to apply a pattern that's been copied onto crack and peel mailing labels. All right, you have an option. You could either use your scriber to scratch in the, the image or you can use a permanent marker like a Sharpie pen in order to have more contrast. Now when you mark the pattern, be sure that you've got every little twist and turn marked down before you remove the pattern so that you don't have to go back and try to match things up. And take your time. Make sure you do it just right. Okay. I now have my pattern applied to my copper surface and now using my jeweler saw I can start to cut it out. Now remember when you saw you want to sit so that if you put your elbow on the bench pin your upper arm is parallel to the floor. That puts the work right in your face and when you hold the saw frame keep it loose in your hand. Don't hold it too tight and don't push it through the metal. Let it glide up and down and work perpendicular to the work surface of the bench pin. All right, I'm going to start sawing from one edge and work my way all the way around. Okay, I finished sawing out my leaf and now I'm ready to move on to the next step. What you want to do is drop this leaf halfway into a bench vise. So you're going to determine where the middle of the piece is by looking at both ends and dropping it in and then tightening the vise. You're going to be using the vise as a bending break. And what we can do is take our thumbs and just push the piece over gently. Now you could use a mallet for this if you want to, but it really isn't necessary. All we want to do is just give the piece a slight bend in the middle. The bend in the copper piece will serve as a guide or a channel for the piece of sterling silver that will be soldered to it to act as the vein of the leaf. So if you get it perfectly in the center, that's great. If not, it's okay. You can adjust as you go along. Our next step is to take our silver wire and to use the leaf that we just bent as a measuring device. And what we want to do is we want to measure a length of wire that would simulate the vein of the leaf. 
And where that vein comes off the leaf, we want to give it a little mark with our Sharpie pen to determine the length of the, of the actual leaf segment. Then what we want to do is take our diagonal cutters and cut approximately two inches or two and a half inches off the end of the wire. So your wire should look approximately like that. Now what we're ready to do is to move to our soldering station. So what I'll do is I'm going to put the leaf away for now and I'm going to take the end of the wire that fits on our leaf and I'm going to paint it with flux. Now you want to give it a good coating of flux because the flux is going to be used almost like glue in this first phase of the soldering. So I'm just going to use my brush and give it a nice coating of flux. Don't give it so much flux that it's like a, a icing on a cake. Just give it a nice even layer. Okay, now lay that wire on your soldering uh, char charcoal block and then with tweezers you pick up small pallions one at a time and you're going to place the pallions next to or alongside the wire. Now remember, pallions are approximately one millimeter square and the correct placement for this next operation is you want to place the pallions approximately three millimeters apart from one another. The idea is that you want to have enough solder on the surface of the charcoal block so that you can cover the entire segment of the wire that's flexed with solder. Okay, I finished placing my pallions and as you can see I have a straight line of pallions on one side of my wire. Now I positioned the pallions three millimeters apart and on my side of the wire because what I want to do is slowly dry out the flux with my torch and once the flux is dry I want to heat it to a point where it becomes a little bit gooey like glue and start to roll the wire towards me so that it simultaneously picks up the, the pallions of solder, transfers heat to them, and allows them to sweat or solder onto the wire itself only where the flux is. So let me grab my torch and I'll show you how it's done. Okay, we've got the flux drying out. You can see it bubbling. And then it should clarify and become its more gooey state. Now at this point, what I can do is I can start to pull the wire onto the pallions. And as I'm doing this, I keep my heat moving so that I don't melt the wire. And you can see the pallions kind of sticking up and what we want them to do is to relax and flow onto that surface. Okay, I have the pallions successfully sweat onto the part of the wire that will be attached to the leaf. Now what I need to do is pick it up carefully and I'm going to use my copper tongs to do this so that I can quench it and handle it with my fingertips. Now it should be very very easy to see where the solder is attached and where there's no solder. That's because the wire will slightly oxidize and what we want to do is we want to take our flux and reflux just over the area where there were pallions applied. Now the idea here is that we want to do a sweat solder operation that's completely clean. We don't want any of the solder to spill out onto the surface of the leaf which is, a, which is of a contrasting color. It's copper. Okay, so I've successfully covered the area with the pallions. Now, if you have a little bit of charcoal stuck to your project here at this point, don't worry about it. It'll burn away and it won't cause any problems. Okay, now we're ready to attach this to our leaf. So I'll bring the leaf back onto the charcoal block 
and very carefully I'm going to position the wire down the center of the leaf. Now, some of you may want to use tweezers for this. In fact, let me grab mine just to show you how you might control it better. Maybe we'll hold both ends and drop it right down the middle of the leaf, just like that. Now we're ready to solder the wire to the leaf. Okay, let me light the torch and start soldering. Now, you don't want to run your flame directly over the wire. It's the thinnest part of the project. So go around your leaf and skip this one little area at the end where the wire sticks out. It's okay to hit the copper leaf with the flame, but you also want to try to maybe get under it a little bit and ignite the piece of charcoal underneath so that it radiates heat onto your project. Have your solder pick handy in case you have a problem, but you should be able to just do this without touching your solder pick at all. Whenever soldering, always remember to heat the largest element first so that it can radiate heat to the smaller elements. Okay, now we're beginning to see the pre-melted solder flowing off of the wire and onto the copper leaf. Now just be sure that you get all of the areas covered. And a good way to double check would be to run your solder pick along the edge of the wire and make sure that there are no gaps. Okay, I think we have success. Be sure to quench your tool so you don't burn yourself. And then carefully pick up your project and quench it. Now's probably a good time to pull it out of the quenching bowl and double check to make sure that there are no gaps. It looks like I'm good, so I'm ready to throw it into the pickle. Okay, this has had some time to pickle and it looks nice and clean, so I'm going to give it a little bit of a brass brushing. Brass brushing is important just to make sure that you remove any corrosion that didn't come off in your pickling. And that looks like I've got a good leaf with my wire well attached to it. Okay, let me take this off the bench and I'll show you the next step. Before you begin working with anything else, you need to protect the wire hanging off the end of the leaf. We don't want to break it off. So what I want to do is make a loop. Now, to do this, I'm going to use my rosary or round nose pliers. I'm going to grab the wire at the end of the leaf, about midway into my rosary pliers, and then I'm just going to push that wire over. Then what I want to do is grab just slightly into the pliers and pull that little bit of wire up and over the top. And then I want to step up and sweep that little wire around all the way to the other side. Then what I want to do is hold the loop with the end of the pliers and then just coil the wire down to the body of the leaf. Now, depending on where you grab, this may take one or two little times around the, the leaf. And in this case, for me, I only had to do it once. When you're done, just clip the excess wire off, and then you can use your pliers to push it down all the way there. Now, it looks like that. Now, the reason for making that loop is so that we don't jostle that wire so much that we fatigue the metal and snap the wire off. Because in the next step, we're going to work with this leaf in every single direction. Okay, the first thing that you want to do is open up your vise and insert a very small dapping punch. Now, some of you may not own a set of dapping punches, and what I would suggest for you guys is you could use the very small end of a chasing hammer. Just capture the hammer in the vise instead. All right, now you're going to act like a machine. And you as a machine, this is all you do. You go like this. 
you don't do this. The machine only stays in one place. You want to move the project in the machine. So watch what I do. I'm going to start the machine, and then I put the piece into the machine, and then I can manipulate the piece in any direction that I want so as to give this leaf the proper form that it needs to look realistic. Now, some of you are going to write me and you're going to say, but John, I can't get close to the wire. It doesn't matter. Okay, so I have successfully planished this one part of the leaf into a nice sort of domed form. Give me a few minutes and I'm going to complete the rest of this and I'll come back and show you the result. Okay, there is the finished leaf and as you can see we have given it a nice bend that gives it dimension going down and we've hammered the areas coming out from the wire into nice domed shapes that look realistic and because the sweat soldering was so successful I don't see any messy areas where I have silver solder on the copper where they sh where it shouldn't be so we have a nice contrast between the very white bright silver vein and the nice brown red of the copper itself have fun making these leaf earrings and check out our other products and videos on the onlinejewelryacademy.com. Thanks for watching.